Laura is in Alaska. Go ahead, Laura. The World Economic Forum was preceded by uh, the Bilderbergs. Existed as Bilderberg existed. Group, yeah. They've long existed as very extreme uh, world globalists, working together with NGOs, private public cooperation. Who are the Bilderberg Group? And why do they meet every year? What do they talk about? And why the secrecy? Do they intend to rule the world? So over there, the world power elite are gathering. We all talk about a democracy that isn't there. People want to know what's going on, what we're talking about. A global tyranny that would have made George Orwell wince. Do you know who the Bilderberger Burgers are? It's a it's a corporate lobbying event, but it's a, a lobbying event that's so powerful that the, the uh, rather than meeting in the in the lobby of Parliament, say the parliamentarians come to Bilderberg. They're an elite global summit. That's what the Bilderberg is, an elite global summit. For years, the agenda and list of attendees of Bilderberg was kept a secret. A list of discussion topics is now released, but it's extremely vague. This is a classic organization drawing together uh, prominent and influential people in all areas of human life. Politicians, um, some journalists, who have a golden rule, you don't report what happened at the Bilderberg meeting. Uh, these are military people, intelligence people, many, many heads of major global corporations. It's being rebooted in a security-drenched hotel in Washington, D.C., with a high-powered guest list that includes the heads of NATO, the CIA, the GCHQ, the U.S. <laughs> National Security Council, Two European prime ministers, a healthy sprinkling of tech billionaires, huh. and Henry Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And what the Bilderberg Group is, is a, a way of bringing these people together to form a common policy. And many of the people, most of the people that turn up, um, have no idea what the big goal is. CIA Director Burns, NSC Principal Sullivan and Campbell, Pfizer CEO Barua, <laughs> Peter Thiel, Kissinger, and media elites are there to discuss Ukraine and the global economy entirely off the record. A lot of these people come and go, come and go, and are never seen again. They're just useful in, 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 in a short space of time. So Michael Tracy says this, congratulations to Jake Sullivan, Kirsten, Cin Kirsten Cinema, Peter Thiel, Jens Stoltenberg, Eric Schmidt, William Byrne. Now, I know who most of these people are. But then you have others like um, David Rockefeller, who has been involved in the Bilderberg Group from the start. Henry Kissinger, the same. But I don't think Klaus Schwab was there. He's the WEF guy, right? Was no, he there, he Max? His mentor was there who helped kind of sustain and grow this meeting, and that's Henry Kissinger. These people span the whole period of the group's existence. To be sure, the Washington Conference is a high-level council of war, headlined by the Secretary General of NATO, Bilderberg veteran Jen Stoltenberg. From what is written about the group, it seems they are indeed impressive in their breadth and power. But there are other powerful groups that meet regularly, like the G7 and the G20. The major difference here is that those meetings are not secret. The bunch of billionaires from oil, pharma, NATO politicians, CEO, and high members from Palantir can all meet in secret via the Bilderberg Group to discuss matters involving millions of people, and no one is allowed to ask questions, and few in the media care to cover it. Like every year, no reporters are allowed in. There are no minutes of meetings, no votes, and no policy statements. It's alarming. Now, Max... You covered it. You're there. We showed your reporting. Why do you think the media doesn't cover this? Well, 
many of them were inside. <laughs> <laughs> what we've got to ask about a meeting like Bilderberg is who's not there, mm -hmm. and that's most people affected by the issues that they're talking about. And therefore, they're not allowed to cover it. I mean, you agree to Chatham House rules when you go inside that building. That means you're not allowed to quote anyone. It's completely off the record. And participants are bound by what's known as the Chatham House rule, which allows people to make use of the information they've received, but not reveal the identity or affiliation of the person who gave it to them. And Applebaum, isn't she, isn't she a journalist? Uh, yeah, she's a, a huge neocon columnist at the Washington Post cheering for war with Russia. She's obsessed with war with Russia, and she's married to a veteran Polish diplomat, Radoslav Sikorsky, who's also at the meeting. Christia Freeland, Michael Gove, the king of the Netherlands. Why is it that for years it was even denied the Bilderberg Group even existed? There are splits among the people who run modern capitalist societies. And so they have meetings. Back in 2019, the last time Bilderberg met in the flesh, the conference kicked off with the optimistic topics, a stable strategic order. And what what's next for Europe? Is the Bilderberg group the true elite that rules the world? Do they manipulate presidents and economies to their advantage and manipulate us to believe that we have a voice and a choice? This year, however, the agenda reeks of chaos and crisis. Top of the schedule is the blandly terrifying item, global realignments, followed by NATO challenges. My goodness, my nation is the whore of the universe. Since World War I, my country, the USA, has been doing a slow but controlled demolition of the entire world's nation's economies to keep them all colonies. And it's having a, a disastrous effect on the population of the world and specifically the population of Europe. The manipulation lately of the COVID funds misuse, and now the Ukraine conflict. What are they trying to hide, if they are hiding anything? But even with their strict confidentiality, we may know a few things. We know, for instance, that the Bilderberg meetings were initiated by Prince Bernard of the Netherlands in 1954. It was founded as the Cold War began in 1954 by a Polish emigre named Josef Redinger, who was very likely a British intelligence agent and a CIA or an OSS asset. In the Bilderberg Hotel in Holland. The meeting takes place every year in a different place. We may also know the general topics discussed in the meetings. And it says in the website of the group that participants can use any information they received in the meetings without revealing the names of the speakers or participants. And his goal was to tighten the bond between Europe and the US, but essentially he was an anti-communist, an anti-socialist who wanted to uh, lean on the US as a military protector of Polish nationalism specifically, but of uh, the aristocratic and upper class of Europe to understand the timing of the creation of the Bilderberg Group is to understand what World War II was really about. Wars are used to transform a society. The status quo was gone and you create another. And in the aftermath of World War II, that's when the status quo was transformed into a world structure. You can look at NATO as the army of the participants in the Bilderberg meeting. And what they're doing is preventing Europe from becoming independent or acting on its own interests and making sure that Russia remains a permanent hostile enemy that is surrounded by bases and blockades. That's when globalization really started to take off. And in there is the Bilderberg Group in 1954, which was a part of this 
coordination strategy between different countries to create this common push in a desired direction. By placing and doing what we've always done, we utilize our military, which has 800 military bases in 80 countries, to be the bullies. And that's what NATO really, truly represents. And to be the force that works hand in glove with these World Economic Forums. Max Blumenthal tweeted out, I attempted to enter D.C.'s Mandarin Oriental Hotel, secret site of the Bilderberg meeting. So I went down there. It was very clear that this was the Bilderberg meeting. It was surrounded by cops, gated off. I mean, there are literally tents of homeless people like feet away from that hotel. If you just look to your left. Oh, was, really? Yeah, right under the right. There's a bridge about 50 meters from the hotel, and it's just filled with tents of homeless people. So on, I got there on the last day. It was departure day, and you just saw one black sedan or SUV after another lining up for the attendees. So here, here is uh, Max trying to get into the hotel. It looks. I'm actually surprised you got to get this close. This is kind of so they got they got the the fencing up, but the fence is open for a brief moment, and Max, the journalist, makes a break for it, and he gets all the way in. Watch how far he gets. I got past the bomb dog. Oh, really? Because you didn't have a bomb. Who's this guy? So they see him. Now they got him. Hey. Green squad. Here comes the green squad. Yeah, he had, he had do I need a lanyard to go yeah, yeah. see reservations? Yeah. yeah well, no, so I need to, so no yeah, entry inside no for the Bilderberg meeting of national security and big tech elites meeting in I'm secret sure. to discuss yeah, Ukraine. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know who you're doing security for? Okay. So they don't even tell you who you're working we have for. No idea. So that's how secretive the Bilderberg meeting I have is. No idea what even Bilderberg is. So none of you know who who's inside. It's not a meeting of national security and big tech elites to discuss Ukraine and the global economy off the record. <laughs> it's not. Oh, see, now you made him close the gate, Max. I hope you're happy. Wow, look at that. So they just put a fence around the entire hotel, Max? That's what they did? The entire hotel was reserved and a giant fence was on all sides of it. It was surrounded with these goon squads of guys in black suits talking into their sleeves. And then they had DC Metro police out there as well as a kind of outer ring. And the, yeah, the entire hotel was booked officially under the Hong Kong government. That was the official cover story. Okay. Can you, can you imagine if they had that kind of force on January 6th? Uh, yeah. You know, after it showed <laughs> up on the old Palantir? They're not letting anyone that way for the Bilderberg meeting. <laughs> were you in the Bilderberg meeting? Yes, you were in the Look Bilderberg this guy. meeting. I don't, don't know. know. Were you in the every everybody turns it into a mental defective immediately? Do you see that? I huh? Yeah. I don't know. Where what am I doing with a lanyard and a suit? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's an off-the-record meeting, I know, and it's secretive, but can you turn your lanyard around? <laughs> Hi, Max Blumenthal. Were you? Wow, wow! So that guy tried to intimidate why, you. Why won't anyone say? Yeah. It seems undemocratic. I mean, these are people who decide have a huge influence on policy. They're talking about a war right now that could turn into a, a world war. This is the, and many of them uh, claim to be democratically elected leaders, but they're meeting in secret with leaders of multinational corporations and big tech and the defense industry so he was there let's see what he has to say josh friedman you've been here since yesterday morning can you confirm this is the bilderberg meeting i can confirm that but it really took me a while to confirm that <laughs> the announcement about the meeting didn't come out till thursday afternoon 
So many of the participants had already been here. Eventually, yes, I did confirm it, but it was not in, it's not like years past. It really took a while. Right. Um, the hotel itself has been lying to people who call and said it was reserved by some hotel, some Hong Kong business group. Yes, the hotel was rented out for the weekend by the Hong Kong government. At least that's what these, right, these right. neighbors told me. Okay, and, and just like in one minute, why, why do you think it's significant to cover the Bilderberg meeting? What's happening here and what's wrong with it? I travel around the world covering geopolitics, and to me this is first and foremost a geopolitics meeting, as it is every year. But I think this year is very significant for a few reasons. One, Bilderberg hasn't met since 2019. That's a long time. They've got a lot to discuss. A lot has obviously transpired since then. And then you also at this meeting have with the backdrop of everything going on in Eastern Europe with Ukraine and Russia and Finland and Sweden's bid to join NATO, you have the Finnish prime minister here, I believe. Uh, you have, of course, the Stoltenberg, the NATO chief. He's here very regularly. So if you look at the, the talking points or the important topics for the meeting, you see a lot of stuff coming up related to you could say the chaos in the world right now, the war in Ukraine, the Ukrainian ambassador of the US apparently is here, she's on the list. So a lot of major, major geopolitical developments are, we would think, being discussed inside there with key players in the meeting. Where can people see the list of participants? Bilderbergmeetings.org. Oh, so even though they're trying to pretend that they're transparent, they're actually becoming more secretive. They are a global elite which work to push human society into the direction of a global tyranny now uh the only person i'd ever heard talk about this kind of stuff of course was alex jones and it's almost as if they let alex jones talk about this stuff to discredit anybody else who would talk about it because then you yeah. sound like alex jones you know um but this is real and this isn't about conspiracy theories. This isn't about uh, this isn't about secret plots for world domination. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a spoiler alert. The, I, did, I used to always hear people saying rich people uh, and and uh, oligarchs, establishment figures saying, oh, is there really you think there's a meeting where everybody gets together the <laughs> and they decide how where are these meetings happening? There's a pretty clear D dominant uh, elite out there. Oxfam put out a report earlier this year for, for Davos, another meeting that tends to be talked about in a similar vein, um, where we brought to light evidence that's available for everyone to find, which is that just 62 people in the world have the same wealth as the poorest half of the population, 3.5 billion people. Mm. But now there's an actual meeting that you can't even get into or re and no one's even going to report about, and it's called the Bilderberg. And it's really happening. And uh, again, uh, no reporting about it. Um, I actually remember years ago, I thought, oh, the Bilderberg, that's just some kind of conspiracy theory. Like, it's just like the Council on Foreign Relations, a bunch of rich people getting together. But no, it's very clear that what was taking place there was incredibly undemocratic, extremely corrupt. Notice. Everyone is agreed among them that what they want is capitalism to continue. The people to run the corporations continue. If if you're getting your news from corporate media, I, none of it's true. I, I don't even know how. Well, what else I can tell you. The reason why the country's in the play, way it is, is because you believe the corporate media owned by the people who are screwing you. So that hotel is filled with people who are screwing you. They have no interest in democracy. They never did. And let me explain why. Every one of these people, they operate their enterprises in a fundamentally anti-democratic way. I mean, literally, ABC, CBS, Fox, MSNBC, CNN, nobody covered this, Max? The CEO of Axel Springer Media Group which is one of the major right of center media groups in Europe where all employees have to swear an oath of loyalty to the transatlantic relationship between Germany and the US as well as the special relationship between Germany and the state of Israel was at the meeting and Ax Axel Springer Media owns 
Politico, as well as Business Insider. You also had uh, Gideon Rockman, who is the chief foreign policy correspondent for Financial Times Inside, and Shashank Joshi, who is the chief military correspondent for The Economist. We also mentioned Ann Applebaum. So no, they don't seem very interested in this meeting, which I think is the most consequential meeting of the year and clearly the most secretive. If the Bilderberg Group is indeed the shadow world government, well, they are doing a terrible job. Or maybe they are getting exactly what they want. And is it really true that after they discuss something in their agenda, then we see surprising effects in the real world? Big Jim Tucker's big theory about it was that the Bilderbergs had taken down Margaret Thatcher's government because she opposed uh, EU integration and the common you know, EU currency for the UK and brought in this tool, John Major, who was then followed by Tony Blair, the ultimate kind of puppet of the global hovercraft elite. But it's important for media scrutiny to be applied to this particular conference, and there was none. The Guardian published a piece by Charlie Skelton, who's covered the Bilderberg for years, and he only got background information. What, what happens is that it's a, um, uh, an intensive three-day summit um, at, at which uh, the participants um, will, will sit down and, and be part of a, an extremely rigorously structured conference. Um, and there were no anti-war protests either. Ah. I mean, that should have been the base of protest for the entire anti-war movement because they were plotting the next phase of the Ukraine war and the famine that the global South will be plunged into very soon. The food shortages that are about to hit are on an apocalyptic level. That's according to, I think, the Sydney Morning News. Yeah, apocalyptic food shortage threatens. Says That's the Bank of England governor saying that. The Bilderberg meeting uh, is playing out in public now in a very dangerous way, where instead of trying to resolve a food crisis that is going to possibly kill millions of the most vulnerable people in the world, they're coming up with excuses for it to save their own asses. These 0.001% of elites. These Bilderberg elites of the elites, these so-called um, masters of the universe. Yeah, I still can't believe what that what's happening is happening. That I can't either. I can't either. And uh, and, and, and what, Alex Jones is one of the only people talking about it? Like, that's where we're at? A guy who was banned in... Right, for all social back, media? Every social media pro yeah. platform? Uh, all right. That's the Bilderberg. Uh, you're not going to hear this on corporate media for whatever reason, but guys like Max went there. Guys like Max know what it's about. And now you all know what it's about. Well, I'll tell you what, Laura, uh, as you describe it and very accurately, it's, uh, it's a grim picture. Uh, the only thing I can say in response is they can only do all this as long as we allow it. If we get off our knees and stand up to them, then the great don't seem so great. And for masters of the universe, they look like a pretty weird bunch of oddballs to me. And I'm not prepared to let these weirdos of the World Economic Forum to run my life and to create uh, misery for my children and grandchildren. And if everyone felt that way and acted that way, we could blow them away. We could, we could all sneeze and drown them. That's how few of them there are and how many of us there are. So we mustn't be defeatist or or pessimistic about this. Uh, the, the solution is in our hands. We simply have to resolve to take it.